All right, today we are going to take some time to answer a letter that we got from Estonia. I'm not going to show the letter because it is about what is a Christian's right to privacy. Back up just a little bit so they can see. We're going to cover three things in this study. I'm going to tell you what they are before we even get into it. Number one, we're going to destroy the myth of being totally anonymous. All right. I'm going to talk. This is going to be a very detailed study. Number two, the importance of privacy. You can't be anonymous, online especially, but there is some things you can do to be private. Number three, what God can do for you spiritually on this issue, the issue of your right to privacy. Okay? Um, now, going back in here, you can put that letter down. I um, don't know if we're going to be using this thing much because we have a lot of notes that we wrote out here. But uh, just to give some... Quick little qualifications here for those who don't know. My wife was in was in military intelligence um, and the Navy, and uh, she has been a very she studied the, the issue a lot. Now I will say that her area of expertise ended in 2010 in the military. Professionally, yes. And then all of 2010. Academia in summer of 2011. Okay, so. A lot of what we're going to be saying might seem outdated to you if you're in the Silicon Valley tech world, whatever else. I'm sure there's new things that have come out. But the whole point is, once you understand the agenda there, the technology is more and more about invasion of privacy, getting more people's information. Why? Because it's about money. Mm -hmm. It's about getting that personal identification from people so that you can see, track what they're doing online, so that you can, market, yeah, you can market to them. And everything. Um, so I brought her into this study. There will be some scripture with this, but it's not an actual sermon. It's more of a answering a question. And my wife is much more the expert in this area than I am. Um, my background has been one of extreme resistance to technology. <laughs> and the Lord brought me into this thing. Um, it's kind of, I gave the analogy, we were talking about this uh, over the last couple of weeks. I mean, this has been a big issue for us over the years. And I said, it's kind of like a farmer and he just wants to do his thing. He's got his crops figured out for the year. He's got the animals to feed. He does everything else. And all of a sudden, an, an invading army brings war to their village. And he has to look at things and say, okay, am I going to have to give up some things to join this fight? Yes. And, but his end goal is to go back to the farm eventually. Well, that's kind of me. Um, when I first started in video ministry, I actually wasn't even showing my face. I showed my hands and my hands only um, early on. Then I did, my channel initially was called Husky 394 XP and I wasn't saying my name at first. Then I started to say my name. Why? Well, the Lord kept showing me, you know, do a little bit more here, do a little bit more here. You say, well, then we can just forget about privacy, forget about, no, no. Watch the video, okay? This is going to be a very, very big video. And uh, we're going to say a lot of different things in this. But let's start out here. We're going to destroy the myth of being totally anonymous. All right, point number one, all right? Um, and we're going to show you what the Bible says about all this stuff too. We're going to go over a lot of scriptures. Um, now, if you don't know, I'll put it right on your books there. If you don't know, um, I mean, you might just be totally green to what the internet is. Green meaning ignorant. You know, not willingly ignorant, just you're innocent, ignorant, you don't know. But the fact of the matter is, when you get online, when you get on the internet, you are not anonymous. You aren't just on there, I'm going to check out this website, nobody knows about it, whatever else. That's why I warn very much about, you know, uh, men looking at pornography and whatever else. Every click of the mouse that you make when you're online, mm -hmm. every single time you click the mouse, it is being recorded. Mm -hmm. Okay? Every page you look at, every song you listen to, every video you watch, everything that you do is being recorded. Mm -hmm. You say, well, how do I know that? Well, a very simple thing. Again, without getting into all the technical stuff, just look at your browsing history. You can just go and you can see where you went. It's available to you. Okay, now if it's available just on a low level to you, it's available on a much higher level to the actual internet service provider. Well, 
a dead giveaway of how your the fact that all your online activities, whether it's a PDF file you looked at and you downloaded, anything you do online is tracked through your internet protocol IP address. It is connected to your physical location. Yeah, we'll get into that. You're getting ahead of me again. She always does. I just this. don't know any better. <laughs> but it, it is. You everything that you do online is being tracked and traced. Okay. Um, be very careful what you're looking at. Um, what about your emails? Your emails are being recorded and databased. Again, you get into some of the NSA type of stuff and whatever else. They even will have keyword search type of things, whatever, to, you know, to look for people mm -hmm. that are saying certain words. I'm not even going to repeat right now because then I'll get put into a database and whatever, but terrorist types of words that would lead people to be doing violent acts and whatever else, and they're emailing back and forth. The computers can look for those types of things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and like I said, I realize that there's people out there in the technology industry that know a lot more than we do with the more modern updated stuff. But she knew about this stuff while in her, in her time in the military, saw a lot of this type of thing. And of course it's going to get more intrusive, more invasive mm -hmm. as time goes by. So we really don't need to know the latest, what's the latest software programs and whatever else behind the scenes. It's just more invasive, okay? It's not that hard to figure out. And much more maintenance intensive. Yeah. Gotta love computers, you know. Um, uh, another point here. Your internet protocol address, your IP address, if you hear that, um, is linked to your physical address. Mm -hmm. I've talked about this before. Our cheesy little website, kingjamesvideoministries.com, it has a thing called, was it Clicky, I think? It might be. I think it's called Clicky. Yeah. And you actually go in there and I can tell who visited my website. I can actually, it'll take me to your house, to your where your street is and whatever. It'll actually go in and show me your home. It'll show me your operating system, mm -hmm. the kind of computer you have. Any printers Just, connected to your network? Well, it doesn't do it doesn't do that. Oh, My okay. software doesn't do that on there. But it came it came with the webs website that I got. Webs.com is the internet provider that I go with for my website, which isn't even the best, you know, internet website, you know, program. So, uh, by the way, I'm sorry for I'm seeing the light kind of going on and off and whatever else here. The sunlight we got the door right over here, so I apologize about the lighting, but. The point is here, um, again, your uh, internet providing, you know, when you're online, it's linking to where you physically are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even if you are going to the library, we'll say, you say, oh, I'm going to outsmart it because I'll go to the library and I'll look up things at the library and whatever else. Okay, there's still people seeing you at the library. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you can log in you know, and, and we're not, don't even have to log in. It's already just there and the internet's available for free at the, at the library. People still see you sitting there. Right. Okay. And the library has its own system of system administrator, people who service the servers. They have, you know, database managers. Mm -hmm. I mean, and most libraries have rules about what you can't look at. Yes. Computer there. usage policies so, of different names. Our, our local library here, um, you're not allowed to get on Facebook. You're not allowed to get on YouTube. So, um, you, you know, there's not really any kind of a way. You say, well, I'll do it at work or whatever else. Okay, your employer is going to see this stuff. You're, mm -hmm. You know, you can't get on the Internet and not leave any kind of a trail behind. Right. All Even right. if you delete your tracks, it's still there. Yeah. And... Then you get into the thing of the problems associated associated with a virtual private network. VPN for short. Okay, and she knows more about that stuff. There are different types of software in this, and the, the guy that wrote to us from Estonia was bringing up some of this stuff. And I'll just say some things and you can fill in the details. Basically, you can get on and it's a lot of, um, what do you call the, the type of software? It's, it's not Microsoft, it's not Apple, it's, it's uh, open source, is it? Open Office. But I'm saying like open source type of... Oh, yes. Open source is the shortened name, but the full name is Free Licensed Open Source Software, FLOSS for short. Mm -hmm. And it basically is the non-proprietary uh, version of Microsoft Office or 
um, end note or whatever you're using. And I realize again, please have grace for us. I realize that there's stuff that's even far more advanced encrypted type of stuff and whatever else than what we're even bringing up. Right. right? We're not trying to make this a definitive, you know, we know everything, not at all. I'm just simply saying, even with really ultra secure software and whatever else, you're still going to be tracked with it. Mm -hmm. Correct? Absolutely. And if you get the really, really, really ultra secure, quote unquote secure stuff, um, the problem with that is a lot of times you can't get on regular websites. Right. You have yep. decreased functionality if any functionality, depending on what website you're trying to access, access with your VPN, your virtual private network, uh, mm -hmm. there will be functions that you cannot use. Yeah. And then you have to go to your unsecured regular internet browser and you say, well, I'll just do it there. But then you're losing the point of why you went with the VPN. So it's kind of defeating the purpose. Mm -hmm. They make it in a way that you can't do everything in a VPN that you can do with a regular unsecured internet browser. And I actually experimented with this for a few months after the Lord saved me. And I thought maybe I could go with the VPN. But see, the problem with that is every VPN company out there has ultimately one company headquarters that it reports to and all the individual servers around the, the world that it helps you to bounce from location to location to hide your IP address. Well, you still have a uh, IP address to a certain extent and unless the people, the workers at each server location and ultimately company headquarters are on the ball and actually competent, they usually don't delete their server information. I tried that when I was deployed. I said, why don't we go into the server and we look for this thing that you're talking about? Oh no, we don't have the, you need a certain access and you need a certain clearance level in order to go into the server, which was gated in my tent, in my work tent. And they said, you need to have a need to know and you need to have proper clearance level to even do that. And I thought, boy, talk about red tape. So there could be all sorts of stuff on the server that you say, I don't want that on the server permanent. But the problem is the workers really just don't care, you know, mm -hmm. because there's so much red tape involved with deleting that stuff off the servers. So there's a lot of problems with a VPN that you think, oh, I can keep my private, my personally identifiable information private. Eh, to a certain extent, but it still goes back to the trustworthiness factor of the company that created the VPN that you're using. And you mm -hmm. still have to create an account, or you have to give up some kind of personally identifiable information, PII in other terms, in order to use that VPN, to log in with the VPN, and then you have more requirements of how do I delete my internet history. I have to set my VPN browser to a certain uh, trait in order for it to close out and delete everything that you've used. But then you have the problem with long-term cookies. Mm -hmm. So the whole point is you just go crazy after yes. a while trying to keep up with the thing of, oh, I did, did I delete that? And I, oh, oh mm -hmm. nuts, this had to do, I got to go in here and redo this. And pretty soon you're just saying, why am I even using the internet again? Yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, when we first got married, she put a bunch of stuff on my computer that would that would, you know, go after uh, anything that was tracing or tracking things and whatever mm -hmm. else. And there's so many times I'd go to check out a website or I'd go to do something I needed to do and it was, oh, this is blocked or, oh, oh mm -hmm. and you got to, should you allow this or should you block this? Well, they're trying to access and I'm just, mm -hmm. okay, I can't, I just got to check email or the weather or something here. Just stop. You or know? you read an article that you say, I want to read up on the news about, uh, whatever the subject is, you name it. Mm -hmm. And if you're using a VPN, it's especially problematic because it will say, it will literally give you a pop-up message on your screen on top of the article and cover most of the article and say, we have noticed that you are using an ad blocker at minimum. Or mm -hmm. they might say, we, are, we have noticed that you are using a virtual private network. And uh, in order for this site, in order for you to read this article, please disable your ad blocker or virtual private ne network or whatever the case may be that you're using to keep yourself private or anonymous, you literally will be prohibited from reading that article unless you disable that function, which mm -hmm. destroys your whole purpose of trying to keep private. 
and here's here's the point okay the point we're trying to make here is you say I don't want to go into Walmart because of all the security cameras they have all the CCTV cameras everywhere you know and and uh, you know all the surveillance and everything else well try to figure a way that you can go in there without showing your face well mm -hmm. is it possible well technically I guess you could try to go in with a mask on or some kind of thing <laughs> but then you got to avoid people and you got to mm -hmm. you know and, and before long, you're just saying, why am I even going into Walmart? That's the point. And okay, here's so. The problem with the, going in with the mask on, there's now a, a technology called facial recognition technology, FRT, found in Xbox, among other things. Yeah, but and a lot of things. CCTVs, closed circuit television systems, um, which I was trained in many years ago. And even if you go in in a mask, you still have to show your eyes. Okay, and with facial recognition technology, they can zoom in and scan in your eyes and identify you in their database system of mm -hmm. this. So, you know, so even so. if you're trying to get in and, you know, that's the point we're trying to make. I mean, there's you'd have to go through all kinds of cartwheels and all kinds, I mean, all kinds of headache just to try to keep yourself anonymous and you really can't do it. Mm -hmm. You can't go into Walmart anonymously. You mm -hmm. can't get into the Internet anonymously. Mm -hmm or pick whatever ever other stores in your country or whatever. Okay. What about your personal private life? Okay, the internet obviously you can't be anonymous. Right. Um well, let me ask you a question, very simple. Who do you talk to? You say, uh, well, I I am just going to be kind of anonymous. Okay, do you talk to family? Are they going to tell other people about things that's going on in your life and whatever else and gossip and whatever? Mm -hmm. You go down to the hardware store? Oh, hey, how you doing today? Hey, how, how's the thing going up there on your property and whatever? Mm -hmm. Talk to people. They talk to people. They talk to people. They talk to people. Um, I don't know if I ever told this story before, but went down to West Virginia years and years ago with my brother-in-law. And we have relatives that live down there in West Virginia. They moved there many years ago. And um, they knew a guy that we met up with and whatever, and we want to go fishing. So we went fishing down to this um, lake back in the middle of nowhere. And it was just myself, my brother-in-law, this guy, and his friend. And we went, and we got back, and within an hour, the whole town knew that we had gone fishing. Mm -hmm. Talk, talk, talk. You live down south, you know what I'm talking about. You say, well, you live up in, in Maine, it's not the same there. Well, not openly. Yeah. They're not quite as big of talkers up here, but there's still the gossip. Mm -hmm. You go into the post office, you go into the hardware store, you hear about the, you know, did you hear about so-and-so? Mm -hmm. Okay. How are you going to remain anonymous when people talk? Or how right? about the military? When I was deployed, um, there was, I was kind of hinted, somebody from administration and one hinted about uh, a possible challenge coin that was in the works for me doing a really good job and working hard, as they say. Um, and uh, by the time I received it and I was, you know, I had put it in my pocket of my my DCUs at the time, Desert Cam Camouflage Uniform, now called ACUs. But anyhow, by the time I had received it and the whole thing was over and the Command Master Chief presented it to me and everything, um, it wasn't. It didn't stop there because I walked back to my work tent, went back to my business in logistics at the time, and uh, moments later I ran into one of the N1 personnel and uh, I think it might have been the chief of N1 at the time. And she literally said to me, Hey, I heard that you just received your challenge coin from Command Master Chief Blackhawk. And I thought, that was just a few minutes ago, I said to myself. Huh? It happened that quick? Yes, in the military, in a command deployed command unit, it happens extremely quick. Mm -hmm. So, again, we're just trying to show the thing of being anonymous and just not existing, um, kind of uh, not going to happen. Uh, I'll tell you another little story real quickly here. There was actually a case, I don't remember the guy's name or whatever else, you can look it up if you want to find out more, but there was actually a man who was going to university back in the 70s, I think, 1970s, and he heard about a lot of the Big Brother stuff and a lot of the, um, you know, nuclear, you know, armament and whatever else. And he got all freaked out and he decided he was going to run out into the middle of nowhere. And so for years and years and years, like 30 something years, he was living in the Allagash wilderness out west, that direction <laughs> from where we're at. And he would basically just go and he would steal things from people's cabins. 
And for years and years and years, he got away with it. And people would come up to their cabin and, I thought we brought, you know, peanut butter. I thought we had, you know, two cans. We're down to one. Oh, well, I don't remember. He just would steal just enough just to kind of keep off the radar. Well, eventually people started putting in, you know, CCTV cameras <laughs> in their cabins and they caught the guy. He didn't understand the technology, you know, look in and what's that thing? I don't know. You know, and they eventually caught the guy. And uh, as his, you know, uh, repayment, he had to sit down and talk to each person that he stole from. So interesting story. But he tried to remain anonymous. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. It didn't work. Um, another thing, Google Earth, white pages on the Internet. Um, I didn't have any say in the matter of Google Earth taking aerial photos of my property here. Mm -hmm driving their vehicles out on the road and taking photos of the front part of my property. Uh, I don't have any control over white pages, mm -hmm. putting my address online, putting my phone number online. I don't appreciate that. Nobody called and said, hey, do you mind? If They're just going to put it online. Again, how do you remain anonymous with that? Well, the reason behind doing that is a lot of people are dropping their landline telephone, and as a result, we need to digitize our telephone books because... There's very few people on the landline phone system anymore and a lot of cell phone users and it's ever increasing. And that's mm -hmm. literally their argument for digitizing your um, personal phone number, your landline phone number. Yeah, I, I know. But I'm just simply saying if you want to remain anonymous, mm -hmm. you can't. Right. Okay. Um, and I have here the next point. Many of your private records are being digitized and posted to the Internet, like we mm -hmm. just talked about, without your consent. Mm -hmm. Um Again, you know, we bought this property here, this land. We're on our property right now. And there is no physical address, or at least there wasn't when we bought it. I'm working on getting a physical address because of building here and whatever. But no time at all. The goons had already found it. Mm -hmm. The enemies of the ministry, the devil-possessed little weirdos that, that stalk us like crazy, they went in and, and they get court records and they get in whatever else. And they do background checks and things. And, and they get our personal information and they're spreading it around on the internet mm -hmm. and you think how's this fair well because you see i want to remain anonymous i didn't just put our address out there but the court in this area and the lawyers and whoever else they put our our information online mm -hmm. and make it available to people so how do you remain anonymous okay um how about cell phones we don't have a cell phone, but what about those of you that have cell phones? I mean, again, we're not going to show reports. We're not going to get into it. You just do your own research. You can be surveillanced through your cell phone, mm -hmm. even when they're turned off. They can still listen to what you're saying. Right. And, you know, you oh, I don't have nothing to hide, so who cares? We're going to get into that later on. But, you know, the whole point is you're carrying around something that can surveillance you in your back pocket. Yes. You know, not to mention the EMF fields it puts off, but that's another story that we aren't going to get into right now because we're talking about privacy right. here. And, and, you know, I have to say this. If you are a victim of mind control programming, I'm talking uh, really, really uh, controlled programming, Hollywood type of, of stuff or any other type of programming that you're under, do not use a cell phone. They will track you. They will call you when you least expect it. And uh, if you don't answer, um, they will leave a message on your phone. You know, and I mean, my, my mom did that growing up. Mm -hmm. And she would uh, always call me on my cell phone on when I was, uh, after I fell for the multi-level marketing telecommunications scam years ago. And she would always call me on my cell phone at just the right time to say, now, are you, how are you doing any classes? Are mm -hmm. you getting a job? Are yeah. you working a job? So cell phones are used by programmers to control you even more. Yeah, that's, that's a whole other issue, though. But, I mean, we're talking about just yes. staying anonymous here. But, you know, the, the, the thing of being tracked by over-controlling parents and by, you know, employers and whatever else, you know, I mean, when I go out for walks out there, don't contact me. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't want the phone ringing in my back pocket when I'm watching wildlife or something else, right? Whole other issue. But again, what do you do when you get a cell phone? I am uh, 
you know, John Doe, you know, uh, my address is none of your business or something. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. You got to right. give out all kinds of personal information to get the cell phone. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, they're not secure either. I mean, that's, there's so much we could say against cell phones, smartphones especially. Um, and track phones are still a cell phone. Yeah. Not as goony, but still, mm -hmm. you know what we're saying. Um, online banking. We're going to talk more about that later on, why you shouldn't do that. But, uh, People do online banking. Not good. No. Okay, how do you remain anonymous with online banking? People can hack into it and everything. Um, you say, well, I try to stay away from all that stuff, but my home and my, are my belongings, I keep everything locked, everything's great. Uh, not really. And this is something that goes back through time as well. We're going to look up a scripture here real quickly. Matthew chapter 6. This isn't some kind of a modern, you know, only in modern times, you know, if we could, if we could only go back into the past, we would be secure. Um, let's look about what the Bible says there. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Written back there in the first century. Okay, um, It's an interesting study, and, and again, we're not going to get into the whole thing, but there's no such thing as a secure lock. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've studied locksmithing and a little bit, and lock picking and, th and things, and uh, just out of curiosity and whatever else, and... Um, and I'll tell you what, one of the most mind-blowing things to me was watching an instructor uh, be able to pick any padlock of any kind, combination, the, the skeleton key type, the, the regular type with the regular key. And you get in there, you have the little pry bar, you have the little, the little notched little bar, and you go in there and you move the tumblers up into the right place and click, padlock comes open. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a padlock that's secure. You can even use yeah. a bobby pin to pick a padlock or yeah. most other types of there's, locks. There's a lot of different ways to pick locks. You can pick the locks on cars. You can pick the locks on homes. You can pick the locks on anything. Uh, you get a really truly trained thief or government agent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Synonymous, Much, really. Yeah, in some ways, depending on their mission. But right. um, they can get into anything without you knowing it. Okay, that's why the Bible says you shouldn't lay up treasures here on earth. Lay them up in heaven, spiritual treasures. We'll get back to that later on too. Um, your things are not secure here. But I mean, now banking, banking is secure. Yes. You put your money in the bank, nothing bad can happen to right. it. No such thing as, you know, runs on the bank, bank holidays, bail-ins. Your bail money ins. will always be there and safe and secure. FDIC insured. Yes. Yes, Absolutely. Because the the economy is getting better all the time. You yes. Know. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, we're being very sarcastic, if you can't tell. Um, there's not much down here on this earth that can merely be called secure. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, if you if you watch any of our secular stuff on the secular channel, the Northern Main Off Grid, we actually had somebody walk right onto our, you know, private property. Posted, no trespassing, purple posted paint, the whole mm -hmm. thing. Try to steal something from an old school bus that we have. And it's just going to get worse as time goes by. So, uh, well, we're just going to have an anonymity and we're not going to, people aren't going to know and we're not just going to, we're just going to be bo not bothered and left alone. That's not going to happen. Okay. And that's, you know, there are certain things here that are, that are just modern inventions. The internet, I realize cell phones, a lot of that stuff. Banking, you know, the modern banking system is fairly modern. Uh, well, maybe it doesn't make sense. The banking system is fairly modern, I'll say it that way. Not too modern, but, um, you know, but it's always been the thieves can break through and steal things. Okay, so the spiritual is where we're going to be getting to at the end of the study. Um, what about a landowner? If you're a landowner, um, are there records? With what you own? Mm -hmm. Yes. You say, well, I'm not. I'm a renter. Okay. And does your landlord know who you are? Yes. 
Does your landlord make records of you? Yes. yes. <laughs> what about mortgage? No records there. No, never. Um, you see what I'm saying here? Can you really be anonymous? No. Even a mortgage you say, deed shows a lot of personally identifiable information. Mm -hmm. We've been, we went through the mortgage process a while back. We prayed about it. Maybe the Lord will have us, you know, maybe be okay with us. He wasn't, but you know, we don't have a mortgage on our property. It's paid for. We live debt free, but there's still records. Mm -hmm. Okay. But when we did the mortgage process, I mean, it is really intrusive. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they ask you a lot of questions that I was not comfortable with. <laughs> um, so you say, well, I, I live at home with my family. Okay. So I don't pay rent. I don't have a mortgage. I don't have my name on any kind of a deed, land deed or whatever else. Okay, but you still live with your parents. Do mm -hmm. your parents write you off on your taxes because the money's good? Um, Mine did. You know, uh, do your parents talk about you? Mine do. Are you seen with your parents? Are you seen coming in and out of the house? You see what I'm saying? To, to live in a, in a, just with being totally anonymous, nobody knows I exist, I'm just going to get away from the big brother system, doesn't work. And you say, well, then I can just do whatever I want. We didn't say that either. There's going to be a lot of people that try to loophole this and say, well, because you can't be anonymous, then therefore we can just do whatever we want. We don't have to be have you know, rights of privacy. Uh-uh. Don't get ahead of us. How about uh, property tax and income tax? Um, do you pay tax? No, I don't. Well, then you must not have any kind of income and must not live anywhere. <laughs> okay. Um, and, you know, I get tired of this. People say, well, you're not really free because you pay property tax. Okay. Property tax goes to pay for services in the local area, mm -hmm. right? It's not some kind of a thing where they just pocket the money and they're feudal lords and we have to pay property tax and they steal our property if we don't pay it. It's about road maintenance and things like that, right? Public services. Yeah. You use and the electricity at your, uh, at your property, then you have to pay some, somebody for that. If you use right, the ambulance, that's... that's a service provided by your local municipality. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that's one of the things your property tax goes for. Yeah. And they, and of course they do waste the money. I get it. And the, the more, you know, urban area that you live in, the more they're wasting the money on stupid mm -hmm. programs. You know, 60% of our property tax here where we live, our land here goes to pay for public schooling, mm -hmm. which we don't even believe in. Public schooling is idiotic, but you know, the whole point is I hear this thing among people and they say, well, you, you know, being a landowner, if you own land and you're debt free, well, you still are a slave because you have to pay property tax. You know, it's a dumb argument. Mm -hmm. But the, what about your driver's license? Um, can you remain anonymous and drive a vehicle? Well, you can come up with all the Patriot stuff and whatever else. I'm not a, the, the driver. I'm an occupant. You run into some kind of police officer. Uh, you know, he's going to clean your clock. Uh, don't give me this stuff of, of you can drive without any kind of paperwork and whatever. Mm -hmm. and kind of crazy. Social security number. Again, I don't like social security numbers. Okay. I think it's a, it's a dumb system. It's a, it's a scam. They, oh, well you, you pay into social security and then that money that you paid in magically sits in a box somewhere and it's waiting for you when you retire. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. It's called the money that I am paying into Social Security is being used to pay off or to pay money out to the older people. And as less and less people are working and putting money into Social Security, there's less and less money for people and eventually the system's going to be bankrupt. It's a scam. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, then you should go and you should do the Patriot thing and get rid of it, you know, and whatever else. And I looked into that years ago. It's, it's very murky problematic and you're going to end up in court and you're going to, mm -hmm. you know, go into Walmart with a disguise on your face. You remember, you know, look out for that stuff, but it gets even worse. This thing of remaining anonymous. I'm going to show you some verses of scripture now. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Um, while I'm turning there, you can just show some of the books that you've studied okay. on the whole thing of, of how to find, you know, if you're, um, wanting to go off the radar or if you're wanting to find somebody, find out information about people and whatever else. Mm -hmm. Well, there. let me show you both sides of the situation. 
these two books this is a pen name of the author grant hall was a pen name and uh this person i guess uses his initials but a legitimate name uh i purchased both of these books after the lord saved me because i wanted to know um both sides of the privacy issue and uh since I studied private investigator course materials many years ago, um, it's been kind of a lifelong goal of mine to understand this issue. And here are just some of the, the topics behind these books. Okay. Um, just, just read some of it. We don't want, we don't get in a big thing on this whole deal. Um, well, this is just basically talking about the ins and outs of, of banking how to have invisible home mortgages. Uh, it gets into um, estate planning. They don't say that word in the contents, but Nevada Limited Partnership, that's a tactic of estate planning. Paying bills privately, safe deposit boxes. A lot of the stuff we've already covered, this book talks about it. And mm -hmm. you're going to man-made systems to maintain your privacy, which is foolish. Um, this one right here, is another one, how to be invisible, and again we hey, we've talked about that. we've talked about uh, all this different stuff, and the whole crux of the matter is nothing is secure. Even if you try to think, well, I'll make myself invisible or private or anonymous through mm -hmm. these tactics, it you, doesn't work. And you know we haven't mentioned the thing of going into business and you you hide behind. Uh, uh, corporate title or cor mm -hmm. corporation names and and you 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 know you you hide in multiple layers of it just it's this it's the same thing of trying to be online with this really ultra anonymous thing you just end up that's all you do right and you quite know? honestly this is a book that uh the lord helped me to buy as a lost woman by a professional licensed private investigator and uh this book spells out everything how to track down a person just through public sources, through the government, driving records, uh, certificates, birth, death, marriage, divorce, social security number, county, state, federal, workers' compensation records, corporations and UCC filings, uniform commercial code, abandoned property, bankruptcy, child support, foreign diplomatic representatives and consular offices, national archives, archives, bar associations, internet, national cemetery system. Mm -hmm. These are all publicly available sources in a book like this. So no matter what you do to uh, hide your privacy or try to become anonymous. Some, train... Somebody somewhere is making records of yes. you against your consent in most cases. And if you, somebody wants to find you, somebody wants to, to track you down and track what you're doing, they will find you. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see, well, then it's, then it's hopeless. There's no way to hide. Well, we'll talk more about that. But um, you say, well, I, I, I'm, I'm a master of, of uh, deception and I can, I can get past any system and I, I'm so anonymous. Nobody knows anything about me. I've got all this stuff figured out. You're so dumb. You know, Brian and Catherine, you, you, do, you two don't have a clue how secure I am. I got one that's going to get you that you can't get away from. Written about in Scripture. Long before Jesus Christ ever even showed up physically on the earth in the terms of when he was born of Mary and things. He was physically on the earth a bunch of times before that, but that's another issue. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 20. Curse not the king, no not in thy thought, and curse not the rich in thy bedchamber. For a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which hath wings shall tell the matter. Wait a second. You say, uh, a bird of the air shall carry the voice? Now, what's it talking about? You mean to tell me a bird can talk? No. So, Regular birds can't talk, no. but, but when you read, there are times in the Bible that it'll use something and, and say, you know, it's a bird, but you look into other references, a bird is a type of a devil. That which hath wings shall tell of the matter. And you can, I'm not going to go into a big study here, but a lot of times the Bible defines devils comparing them to birds or to mosquitoes and flies and things like that. Um, you know, your room is a uh, bugged, in other words. Mm -hmm. Or and, you have a bug in the computer that needs to yeah, be fixed. Yeah, you'll hear that term too. 
Where did it come from? Hmm. Or how about the idiom, a little birdie told me? Yeah, exactly. Came from the Bible. Rather interesting. But the point is, there is a spiritual realm there that is listening. How do you remain anonymous with that? Not possible. You could be the ultimate computer wizard, the ultimate uh, just secure, black op, whatever person, and you can't hide from the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, I'll show you another interesting one here, verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. God knows what you're doing in secret. Mm -hmm. How are you going to escape that? Hmm. Very interesting. Jeremiah chapter 23. Go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 23. I mean, even if you can duck all the technology stuff, which we've already proved you can't, you can't duck this stuff, the spirit realm. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 24. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? God's Holy Spirit is omnipresent. It's omniscient. He knows everything. There is no top-level secret security clearances, deep underground military bases. you dumb if you believe this. <laughs> um, you know, D-U-M-B. Um, you know, there isn't anything that the Lord isn't seeing. Okay? And it's not just the Lord. There's also devil spirits that know what's going on. How are you going to hide from that? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you right now, I can't tell you how many times we have had discussions between the two of us mm -hmm. and we see our enemies doing things that are very much according to what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times that has happened. I mean, we've lost count of that. Of what's going on? Well, the room is bugged. Spiritually. Okay. And we've had discussions out in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Out in the woods, walking around and things. So don't tell me, oh, they bugged your house in Bridgewater or something, your ministry office. Uh, wouldn't matter. We've had conversations all over the place, whatever, in areas that they couldn't possibly have bugged, couldn't possibly be listening in. Especially and, since we don't have a cell phone. Right. So they can't listen in that way. Yeah. And if they would use some kind of satellite thing, what it, they're not going to be tracking us. I mean, let, give mm -hmm. me a break. We're not that important. All right, but the spirit realm, the spirit realm knows what's going on. Yes, they certainly do. Oh, well, I don't believe in that. You will someday. If you want wisdom anyways. Um, but look at that verse. Verse 24, Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Saith the Lord, do not I fill heaven and earth? Saith the Lord. Um, what is one of the things that Satan likes to do? Satan tries to counterfeit God. Um, why do you think Satan is so interested in intelligence gathering? Because he's trying to imitate God. You get the devil and, and he's got the NSA and the CIA and the FBI and you get, you know, the alphabet soup type of deal and whatever. Alphabet city. Yeah. yeah. And you get, you know, yeah, soupy city. <laughs> um, but, you, you know, you get all these different, you know, what is it, echelon and, and mm -hmm. all this different stuff he's tracking every little single thing that you why the devil's trying to imitate god mm -hmm. you know i mean oh but we gotta we gotta keep track of everything that people do you know we gotta keep all your checks now when you make write out checks through the bank we gotta make records of everything that you do we gotta make records of all your emails all your phone calls everything to try and stop terrorism and that they still can't stop terrorism what's going on it's a satanic counterfeit of what god does Satan is using, he's a prince of the power of the air, he's using technology to try and imitate God. We have the mind of Christ, the Bible says. Okay? In the future, the mark of the beast, those people have the mind of the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. They will think like him. They will lose their free will. And they will be electronically connected mm -hmm. to Satan and the Antichrist. So, it's not looking good for being anonymous. No. Okay? <laughs> the more technology comes out, the less anonymity 
I, I always, I'm nailing that word. I always, usually have a hard time, but the, the less of that that there's going to be. Okay, so they come out with Windows 12 or 13 or something like that. Uh, it's going to be more intrusive than Windows 10 or Windows 7 or Windows XP or you go back through. Technology will always become more powerful, more intrusive. And controlling. That's just the nature of it. That's how it works. Okay. Mark chapter 4 in the Bible. You say, oh boy, this is not looking so good. Boy, there's just no hope, is there? We'll get back to that. There's some rather interesting things here that we're going to tie into this study as we continue. Mark chapter 4, <clears throat> verses 21 through 23. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Everything's going to come out. I don't care how wicked you are, how private you are, whatever else. Everything will eventually come out. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, to try and hide and pretend that you can live in some little world where nobody knows who you are and whatever else. Mm. So, what do I do as a Christian? Well, we're going to talk about that as we continue here. Um, number two, we're going to talk about the importance of privacy. So what, what can I do? You know, is it even possible to have privacy? We can't be anonymous. Is it possible to have privacy? Because it would seem like that you couldn't. Yes, it is possible to have some privacy. Let's talk about that. Number one in the importance of privacy. First point, be careful what you say and who you talk to. Mm -hmm. Okay, if there are people in your local town that can't keep their breath warm... Yes. Okay. Uh, they just like to talk about everything and they come up and they say, oh, how are you doing? You know, how are you doing? So what's I heard something. Is it true that you're related to so-and-so? Do you know anything about it? And you know that the kind of word gets around. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to old so-and-so. She's, she's got a big mouth. Mm -hmm. Be careful who you talk to. The telephone okay? game. Whatever you say can and will be twisted and used against you in a local town gossip fest known as a cackling hen house or mm -hmm. cackling rooster house. <laughs> yeah. As long as it's not a ladies fellowship group. Because ladies, ladies prayer hotlines that in churches and stuff, they don't gossip. It's all just about legitimate concerns. and <laughs> yeah. Don't make me vomit. Uh, be careful who you talk to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um you say, what do I do? Okay, if somebody just comes up to me, do I just be rude to them or whatever? Well, that is an option. Um, but there's something else that you can do. Um, witness to them. That usually ends it right there. Yes. Well, the Lord actually showed me this today. And, you know, do you know Jesus Christ is your Savior and whatever? Oh, well, look at the time. i got to get going, <laughs> you know. And, if and you know, I'm not trying to say you just use the Lord as some kind of a way to turn people off. No, you know, because if they might actually be open to it. You could actually witness to them and convict them of the sin of gossip. Mm -hmm. So, but please, be careful who you talk to. Yes. Um, Can I say this real quick? An infamous uh, idiom in the military is loose lips sink ships. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, a, a lot of this stuff about privacy, um, Christians have freedom still. Bible-believing Christians still have some freedom, um, at least in America and a lot of the other countries that are watching these videos. But I know that there are some places that are a lot more controlled. And boy, you really have to be careful what you say in those countries. Okay, So again, it's going to vary from country to country, from situation to situation. How much should you talk? How much privacy do you have? How much does your government, that government, give the people? And we're going to see some examples of this as we continue. Um, number two, don't ask for advice from the wrong people. Mm -hmm. If you are interested at all in privacy, don't ask for advice from the wrong people. Okay, give you two examples. Government officials. Hey, would it be okay if I built such and such on my property? Mm -hmm. You know, obviously you're going to build a 2,500 square foot house or something. Well, don't try to do that, you know, privately or something. They're going to find out. Um, but if you're just going to build some small thing, a dog house, or don't ask their permission, okay? Don't just go blab a bunch of things that you're doing on your land and whatever else. You want to put a garden in or, or get a, 
a dog. Do I need your permission to have a dog on my property? You know, be careful with that mm -hmm. stuff, right? Uh, there's a lot of things, you know, I had a, a Marine tell me the one time, uh, old friend I used to have, and he told me, he said, they had a, a saying in the Marine Corps, it's easier to ask forgiveness than it is to ask permission. Okay, if you're interested in privacy, if you don't care about your privacy, then just blab everything. Number two, doctors. Mm -hmm. um, consult your doctor before you try, you know, taking herbs. Uh, consult your doctor before you, you know, eat a, a, you know, hamburger or something. You know, don't talk to doctors, right. okay? Um, doctors, I despise modern doctors, just to be quite frank with you. I can't stand these guys. I, we're learning more and more as time goes by. My wife is getting, you know, more and more stuff. Get one of your books there, the, the just get the top one there on the, the white one. Okay. Um, these doctors have access to the truth. They can't feign ignorance, so I never heard of natural health and things. Physician's desk, desk reference, guide to drug interaction, side effects, and in indications. I mean, that, they know that these pills are poisoning people. And they know they, the natural remedies to get rid of the pharmaceutical pills. Yes. Whether it's, prescription or It's in their books, okay? Mm -hmm. So don't give me this thing of, my doctor just prescribed me, put me on all these drugs, and he doesn't know any better. He could know better, all right? They're just, a lot of them are just too lazy and too interested in the little kickbacks from the pharmaceutical companies to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. okay? Stay away from doctors. Doctors are idiots, okay? Sorry, but they are, okay? Get your health, get control of your own health. Take care of, of your own body, all right? You don't, you know, have to have people, you know, hopefully you don't have to have people come and help you go to the bathroom. Or if you're your If you're an invalid or whatever, okay, I'm not, you're not included in that. But the whole thing is, you know, do Google searches, I have high blood pressure. Okay, what's a natural health cure for that? What foods should I, should I be eating? Nutrition, okay? Let medicine, let your food be your medicine. Some guy said that, I don't remember who it was. Then let medicine be your food. Absolutely, you are what you eat. Mm -hmm. Okay, get your health under control. Don't go to somebody else and try to get them to, to take over your health for you. That's an invasion of privacy. Mm -hmm. You go in there and the doctor says, oh, well, we don't know. Take off your clothes and turn your head to the right and cough or whatever. No, no, get your dirty hands off of me. Don't touch my wife, don't touch my child. I'm a little passionate about that, but on to the next one. I never knew that. Learn something new today. Um, keep as much as you can offline, okay? Um, go on to the next one here and I'll kind of tie these two together. Paper books and handwritten notes. For goodness sake, don't have put your shopping lists and all your personal information and everything else on your cell phone. Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody took my information. Well, you put it on there. Okay. If I set a bunch of my personal valuables out along the road and, and come out the next morning and it's gone, oh, I can't believe it. Well, I'm the one that put it out there. Okay. Right. Some thief, well, maybe no thief will drive by. Well, maybe they will. Don't put your personal information on computers where it's accessible, accessible to the internet, okay? I do believe in tablets, okay? I'll just tell you that. I'm a big fan of tablets. Paper, tablets, okay? And when I, when I get my list done, I cross them out with, I carry a little side pocket thing here, pencil and paper. I know some of our younger viewers are saying, what's that? Well, that's so cool. I've never seen one before. Yeah, and it even has an eraser on the end. What a concept. Whoa. Wow. I know. I'm so ancient and historical here. I mean, man, man, oh, man, you know. But, I mean, I've been doing this for years now. Back pocket. Oh, that's right. i got to look up something when I get to the office. Write it down. Oh, uh, so-and-so called. I need to call them back. Let me write down their phone number and cross it out when I'm done. Oh, we have... a. Uh, just do that shopping needs you know mm -hmm. onions clam chowder salad greens matzos <laughs> oh no i let out some personal information there um you know whatever you know what i'm saying um handwritten yes all right uh it goes a long way uh well i, I like to keep a track of my 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 spending and 
uh, balance my checking account and whatever, my ledger. checkbook and whatever else, you know, ledger, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, but there's a really neat program on the computer. Yeah, somebody can hack into it. And not only that, but if there's a grid down scenario, uh, it doesn't matter how much good stuff is on there really to that specific account, it mm -hmm. will be permanently gone. You need to have it documented on pencil and paper. Type grid down, method. grid down is in permanent grid down. Yes. You know, not just a power outage. Okay, so. And even a power outage could permanently erase it too. And depending on how it's, it is there and whatever else. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're not going to be able to access it, you know, get, have access to it. So, uh, you know, something to think about. Um, another thing, which, you know, the next couple we're going to get in trouble with, but what else is new? Um, no store cards. Do you have a card with us? No, I don't want you tracking everything I buy. Well, then I'm sorry. You can't shop here. No, well, I haven't really, you know, they'll, they'll say, oh, we need a store card over here, whatever, you know. Um, I don't really want records being made of things I buy at a grocery store. You say, oh, you buy any illegal things? Oh, yeah, from a grocery store. Uh, no, I don't buy illegal things from a grocery store. We get fruit and vegetables and meat and bread and whatever else. Um, well, then it's not a big deal. Uh, I don't want people making records of what I buy. Right. It's an invasion of my privacy. Okay, I keep my doors locked for a reason. I keep my door shut for a reason. I like privacy. Just a small thing that everybody can do. No, thank you. I don't have a store card. Oh, but you save half a, you know, 0.5% or something. <sighs> Stupid. Uh, no cell phones. I know, you know, oh, well, I'm watching this on my cell phone. Yes, I know, I know. But, you know, look into the thing of cell phones. Again, it's like nutrition. I can't sit here and tell you what you need to eat in your diet. You have to look that up for yourself. I don't know what your unique issues are. Do you have diabetes? Do you have high blood pressure? Do you have a lot of headaches? Whatever. Look that stuff up. Okay, look up the whole issue of cell phones. Look up the poisonous EMFs that they subject you to. I mean, it says it right in the in the the little warning stuff inside your cell phone saying you're not supposed to hold it against your face. You're supposed to hold it. What is it? Ten inches, I think, away from your your body. I forget. Something like that. A couple inches away from your body. But the tissues you know? in your face are extremely susceptible to absorbing that high level of radiation. It mm -hmm. won't affect you the first time you use it, but. Yeah. Send it out over Bioaccumulative. a long of time. Mm -hmm. hey, oh, oh, I'm not going to listen. Okay, then no, don't. If you're not interested in privacy, just carry the thing around in your back pocket mm -hmm. and just have everybody, you know, at the NSA be able to listen to whatever you're doing. Yeah. Okay. Um, no online banking. Please do not do online banking. Okay. <laughs> that is really stupid. Mm -hmm. Right. With all the scamming and everything else that's going on, don't do banking online. You expose yourself to data theft much easier than just having the paper-based version at, through your mailbox. Yeah, and you have a right to this stuff. That's the whole point. What is a Christian's right to privacy? You have a right to not do online banking, mm -hmm. to have some privacy there. People shouldn't be looking and seeing what you have in the bank or stealing it. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, it used to be a thief would break through and steal in your home, and now you got online thieves. Mm -hmm. They can just break through and steal things online. If you're just not careful, you know, you need to be careful of that stuff. And here's the thing with online banking, you have to have a, a personally identifiable information based account set up with your login and password that you create. And every time you type in your password, they say, make your password this particular length of alphanumeric characters and this strong of a password. But the problem is the systems administrators at that particular company, and the levels above that company all know about your login information mm -hmm. and if they they're evil then they can just say oh okay i, I think i'll uh, piece together some things on this person and uh, dig up some dirt and cause yeah. problems with your account access i sold a four-wheeler years ago to some guys in phil philadelphia we like to call it and they paid with a a, a money order and um and basically i took it to my bank and they cashed it or they deposited it and everything. $4,500 is what I sold the four-wheeler for. And it went back to the company and the company said, these money orders are no good over $500. So somebody got this money order 
working at the bank that gave the money order mm -hmm. and were selling them to people on the street and selling them as forged checks. And it was so good, it was it deceived all the bank, banks except for the people that it actually traced back to. And they said, wait a second, this style it doesn't go over $500. Hmm. And I mean, so you had somebody, a, a employee of that financial institution that was taking those checks, forging them and selling them to the people on the street. So don't tell me, oh, that you know, they, they wouldn't do that. Oh yes, they would. You know, and I knew a guy the one time too that said about this new money that they came out with, the new twenty dollar bills or whatever, that they're collared and everything else and not just the green shades of green. And um, and he said, Oh, this is, you know, this is they can't counterfeit this and whatever else. Mm -hmm. And the guy said they had them counterfeited. This guy was a, a man that knew some guys in this in the city and he said these guys had them counterfeited within hours they were passing out counterfeit bills so mm -hmm. you know yeah anyways let's get back to the thing here another thing i would recommend if you're interested in privacy if you care about privacy no facebook amen okay i know it's important that you take selfies of yourself when you go out to eat and when you get your newer vehicle and you get your new shirt and you get your new whatever and just post it online of yourself all the time, Look here's me. here's me with my new whatever. It's pride. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's pride. Well, I use it to witness. Uh, I don't believe that for you know, one second. It, uh, get away from Facebook. I mean, again, do the study. Do the research. It ties back to the Department of Defense, a lot of other things. They're tracking you. They're tracing you. And not only that, it's not secure because when I was in study in Boston for a few months in 2011, my network security and legal issues instructor mentioned as a threaded discussion topic the issue of quantum cryptology, cryptography. And uh, the Lord showed me three different sources at the time, completely different, unrelated sources from each other. They all said that China already hacked into that and broke the quantum cryptography code. Mm -hmm. And I wrote that in my response. I said, it's already been broken into by China. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you get into the whole thing of hackers as well. I, my cousin was telling me the one time that there was a church that he was going to, a Presbyterian church, and there was a guy that attended there who was literally a professional hacker. And he said he would be hired by, you know, Avast or, or any of the other big you know, McAfee, I think. yeah, McAfee, whatever, big security type of internet, you know, things to keep your internet browsing secure, you know, mm -hmm. and he said, this guy would be hired by them to see if he could hack into their newest systems. And he said, usually a couple hours at most, maybe a day or two. And he was in and he would go to hacker conferences and the whole thing, Russian hacking, Chinese hacking. If you want privacy, if you care at all about privacy, Keep your personal information off the internet as much as possible. Mm -hmm. You can't be anonymous, but don't be stupid. Okay, don't loophole and say, because I can't be anonymous, then who cares? I'm just going to go and just spout out everything I do. Um, hey, here's my new car I got, and I'm going to be away for two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I, just, I just bought all these gold and silver coins, and I'm going to be away for a while. That's okay. I put them in my special safe here in this room or something. <laughs> I love to see these preppers, you know, they'll do these things of, here's my food preps. <laughs> you know, and they show, they show a whole room. I got, you know, here's my five cases of spam. Mm -hmm. Or they'll show oh. off their arsenal hey. of weapons. Yeah, here's all my guns. You know, I got all the guns. Here's all where I keep my ammo. You know, why don't you just show the combination of the gun safe, you know? You got really? rocks for brains. Uh Keep that stuff off of there. I know I know you're so much cooler by sharing everything, but sure, and so much more popular. Um, yeah. Another thing that you can do about privacy is stay away from bad places and bad people. I realize if you're going out and you want to try to witness to people and whatever, okay, I get that. But there are certain areas where you just would do good to stay away from because there are scammers everywhere. They're gonna be trying to get your information and the whole deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, stay away from bad places and bad people. You say, well, I don't, how could you give such, inform, uh, s such uh, advice? Let me show you what the Bible says. John chapter 7. Jesus wouldn't have done that. Jesus didn't stay away from certain areas. John chapter 7, beginning in verse 1. 
After these things Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Jesus didn't go to a certain certain areas there. Uh huh. You know, in the future, persecution could come to the body of Christ, and it might be a thing where we aren't going to be able to go to certain areas. Be wise to stay away from the cities and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I already think you should stay away from cities, but yeah. Um, verse 2. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. Go on into Judea, Lord. you got these great works that you can do. Your disciples need to see this stuff. Verse 4, For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. What are you hiding here, Lord? I mean, you're hiding away from Jewry. They're trying to kill you, sure, but you know, you've got these great works. Go, go show yourself. What are you hiding for? Why do you want to have privacy here? What does Jesus say? Or what does it say here? Verse 5, For neither did his brethren believe in him. They were saying those things because they didn't believe in Jesus. Hmm. So don't tell me, oh, that you know you don't have any right to privacy. You don't have right to hide yourself from certain places and people and whatever. Yes, you do. Jesus did. Verse six. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. You get people to want to kill you when you start saying that stuff. Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. The Lord might not have you go into a certain place because of there's problems there and whatever else. Um, and Jesus did not say, I know one of the new versions takes out the thing yet. You know, it says there, um, my time is not yet come. That's not the one. Uh, I go not up yet under this feast. I know one of the new virgins takes out yet. I got, and it has Jesus saying, I go not up to this feast. And then they, you know, calls him to be a liar because he does end up going up. Verse 10, but when his brethren were gone up, then went he up also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. This is Jesus doing this. Hmm. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, He is a good man. Others said, Nay, but he deceiveth the people. <laughs> Howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. See, the situation might be such that you can't just openly speak about things. But look at verse 14. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? I always love that. Here's God manifest in the flesh, you know, and, and truth personified. And he doesn't have an education. What are his credentials? He's not registered yeah. or certified. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why go ye about to kill me? Look at their reaction. The people answered and said, Thou hast a devil. Who goeth about to kill thee? <laughs> you know? Oh, boy, you got to love that. Example, that would be, you're paranoid. You think the whole world is out to get you. Yeah. You're being, you know, I, I come out and I say, oh, there's people persecute me. Nobody's persecuting you. Mm -hmm. We're just, you know, trying to destroy your ministry and infiltrating and trying to tear you down and, and put doxing. out your, you know, put out your, you know, doxing and all this stuff. But nobody's, you're not being persecuted. <laughs> you know, they did it to Jesus. Okay. And sometimes you have to be careful. Be careful not telling certain people. Okay. There's people that I don't fully trust mm -hmm. that appear to be friends of the ministry. Um, some of you I love in the Lord and whatever else. There's others. You're not winning me over. Okay, unless I really get to know you good, I'm not going to share much personal information. I remember uh, Jeremy Carter, the traitor and fake that he was. One time we're talking, and uh, and he just out of the blue just and he says, "So how many guns do you have?" 
what type of guns? How many guns do you have? And I just thought, why are you asking me that? And I said, no, I don't talk about that stuff online. And his face turned beet red and he said, oh, well, yeah, 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 don't try. okay. I, you know. Um, I don't trust very many people online. Amen. If you're real, if you're legitimate, okay, praise Lord, I'll see you in heaven. We'll talk then. Okay, but uh, there's a lot of information you're just not going to get from me. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'm careful where I walk, if you know what I mean. Jesus taught me that. Next, go to John chapter 20. You know, just because we said at the beginning you can't be anonymous, that doesn't mean that you just give up everything. You just blab to anybody about anything. Be careful. John chapter 20, verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus or came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Wait a second. They're meeting in private? Hiding? Well, no, they should have had, you know, First Baptist Church, all are welcome on the sign there, you know. No. I mean, show me anywhere in Scripture where lost and saved are supposed to be worshiping the Lord together. Lost people are welcomed in. The only place is in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and it says about if, if any walk in that are you know, an unbeliever or whatever else, and they see you all talking in tongues, they'll think that you're crazy. Paraphrasing there. We're not going to go to the place, but you can go to 1 Corinthians 14, see the exact wording. Um, the Bible doesn't say that we're supposed to be building buildings and inviting saved and lost to it. Right? And in a lot of countries, that's real dangerous to do. Mm -hmm. right? You go to communist China and whatever else, uh, communist countries and things, you can't meet and just be open about everything and, oh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to be printing. You know, are you coming to the Bible printing this weekend? Shh. Yeah. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> Don't talk about that stuff. Right? Well, that's, that's not the way it's supposed to be. As Christians, we're supposed to be out there. And you don't know too much, do you? They were meeting in secret. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't go and walk in certain areas. Mm -hmm. Okay? Until the time when, you know, he had his mission to fulfill there. You see, well, that's that's before, you know, well, the John 20 is after Jesus died on the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection. But let's look at Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12, verses 12 through 17. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. Kind of interesting. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he, look at this, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Why not announce it? Put it out on the sign. Apostle Peter just got broken out of prison by the Lord. We're going to have a big meeting here. We're going to have you know, revival meetings. This is going to be... The Lord just busted me out of thing. I'm going to head over this way. Guys, get back to prayer. Your prayer meeting there, okay? See you, you know. Do you have a right to privacy as a Christian? Yes, you do. Yes, you absolutely do. Okay? So we're going to take a break here for a couple minutes, and I'm going to reset my camera so it doesn't keep doing this light, dark, light, dark thing. Apologize about that. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll cover the third part of this, which will be what God can do for you spiritually to keep you private and, and whatever else and do some other, other amazing things. So we're going to get back to the third part of the study here in just a few minutes. Uh, please check out the other video, part number three. <laughs> okay, that's it.